Okay, good morning, all of you. Let's get started. So last class we started looking at this frame element which is combination of axial uh, mem uh, this one axial uh, member as well as a beam member okay so uh, let's read this once again plane frame element there are two types of frames one is plane frame another is space frame so first look at uh, let's look at plane frame similar to <coughs> plane truss problem so members in plane frame are designed to resist axial and bending deformations the two dimensional beam element and axial deformation element are combined together to form an element which can we use to analyze any planar framework. It is assumed that the axial and bending effects are uncoupled from each other. That is, that is the important uh, assumption that we are making here, which is a reasonable assumption within the <coughs> framework of small deformation theory. Okay. So please take a note of this figure. Last class I already mentioned to you. Here, uh, the first one is showing all degrees of freedom. Second one is showing all the nodal forces. And you have D1, D4, and, uh, uh, D1 and D4 as axial deformations. And D2 and D, uh, D2 and D5. D2 and D5, they are uh, transverse uh, deflections. And D3 and D6 are rotations. Similarly, Fx1, Fx2 are axial forces. Uh, Fy1, Fy2 are the transverse uh, forces of the uh, their uh, shear forces. And M1, M2 are the <coughs> moments. And you can see the sign convention. Sign convention for D1, D4 is positive in the uh, positive x direction similarly fx1 fx2 are positive in the positive x direction and d1 uh, sorry d2 and the d5 d2 d5 they are positive if they are acting in the upward direction similarly f1 uh, fy1 fy2 are positive if they are acting in the upward direction and d3 d6 are positive if they are counterclockwise similarly m1 m2 are positive they are counterclockwise so with this kind of sign sign convention now we are ready to <laughs> write the element equation at least uh, local element equation or element equation for a, a frame element oriented uh, with uh, local x-axis small axis uh, along the uh, horizontal plane or horizontal line okay uh, so for this kind of frame element, uh, how to write the element equation system? Assuming, assuming uh, axial and bending effects are uncoupled. So how to write it? It's very simple. You put all these degrees of freedom in a proper uh, uh, manner, in a vector, and then see the corresponding contribution in the stiffness matrix from axial effects and bending effects. I uh, explained to you all this in the last class. So before that, axial deformations, the element equations for that is written separately. Bending is written separately. And contribution is written here. You can see here in this, this is the uh, complete equations for, uh, for frame element in local coordinate system. In local coordinate system, uh, the element equations for frame element are given here and basically uh, after writing the degrees of freedom for axial effect bending effects in a proper manner similarly the force vector uh, you can see where the contribution goes in uh, d d1 this is one one location one one location this is the contribution ea over l 
and uh, next next contribution is one four location next contribution is one four location that is this one and a1 small a1 is defined as ea over l this coefficient and uh, <coughs> small a2 is defined as this coefficient ei over l cube with that understanding uh, this goes into one one location one four and this goes into four one location and this goes into four four location uh, how i am saying that you can see here degrees of freedom d1 d4 based on that i am saying that similarly here uh, once you number the degrees of freedom in this manner this contribution goes into two two location this contribution two three this one two five two six and this one three Two, three, 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 five, three, six. Five, two, five, three, five, 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 six. Six, two, six, three, six, five, six, six locations. So, with all this kind of uh, understanding, you can put them in the proper location. What about the remaining uh, unfilled quantities? They are all going to be zero. They are they are all going to be zero. See, so the, this is how you get the uh, element equations in the local coordinate system. K L D L is equal to R L for a frame element. So please take a note of this one. Please note that this is the element equation for a frame element which is oriented with, with its with its uh, centroidal axis coinciding with the horizontal horizontal axis. Okay, if it is inclined, if this frame element is inclined, then what? How this equation is going to get transformed? We have done that kind of thing for bar element. Or element undergoing axial deformations. Uh, that is how we got uh, 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 equation system uh, for uh, uh, this uh, analyzing plane frames and space frames. So similar thing we are going to adopt here. So now if the element is uh, if the element is oriented. Anyway, uh, uh, before we proceed, here the definitions are given. What is KL is this one. DL is this, RL is this, and if you have distributed load, if you have distributed load like this, acting in the upward direction, uh, what is uh, what is going to be the equivalent uh, 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 nodal values? Equivalent uh, these uh, forces at the nodes. From your uh, uh, earlier understanding, you can easily write here. Only the uh, the transverse load is applied. There is no axial if axial. Uh, there is no load applied axially. So uh, f x one f x two are going to be zero. F uh, y one and f y two are going to be coming from your reactions, and m one m two are going to be coming uh, are going to be coming from your uh, <coughs> the moments. So all that, whatever load vector you have seen for beams, that is uh, arranged in this manner for frame element with the appropriate contribution going into the appropriate locations. And this is a D vector, displacement vector, local displacement vector, local force vector. Okay, sorry. Uh, this is a this is a local displacement vector. This is local displacement vector. This is local force vector. And please see here. Uh, these are all small x. And these are all small uh, capital X, capital Y. Okay. And here 
this uh, u1 v1 theta1 u2 v2 theta2 these are all the global global displacement vector that's why it is uh, d and here it is uh, r in the global coordinate system what is global coordinate system let me show you here <coughs> now this frame element is oriented like this with the local x axis making an angle alpha with respect to the global x axis so now how the element equations get transformed so that is what we are actually trying to discuss and please take a note of this figure please take a note of this figure along with the sign conventions for local so the, this is uh, this is for internal moments internal shears and axial forces these are uh, the internal forces and internal moments internal shear this is the sign convention please take a note of it sign convention is again very important because sign convention for applied moments and uh, uh, forces applied forces and moments as well as uh, nodal degrees of freedom they are uh, the, they are different from these uh, internal forces internal moments and axial forces sign convention is different so please take a note of it so now what is the relation what is the relationship between the uh, local element equations to the global element equations how do we get we need to get the transformation matrix similar to similar to this uh, uh, axial element that we look or we studied earlier similar to that we need to get this uh, uh, transformation matrix how do we get this transformation matrix we need to go back uh, and see how the uh, local force quantities or displacement quantities are related to the global displacement quantities global force quantities <laughs> and how they are related they are going to be related through similar relation as the coordinate system how the local coordinates how the local x axis small x small y are related to capital x capital y we already uh, have that relation small x small y small x small y is equal to or small x small y if you put in a, a vector form and capital x capital y you put if you put it in a vector form how they are related they are related through direction cosines cos alpha sin alpha minus sin alpha cos alpha provided this uh, alpha is measured in clockwise direction uh, from the local axis local x axis to uh, uh, how uh, what angle this local x axis is going to make with the global x axis measured in the counterclockwise direction alpha is measured in the counterclockwise direction if you if you if you forgotten that or if you are still solving your assignment problems uh, you you must be uh, knowing or you must have experience with that so this is what uh, sorry i think that is in the uh, other slides let me bring you that one so that you will have a uh, here whatever i just mentioned small x small y is related to capital x capital y why are this transformation matrix cos alpha sin alpha minus sin alpha cos alpha and that you need to you need to uh, be careful uh, alpha is measured oh, sorry i think just now i mentioned it's in clockwise direction alpha is in measured in the counter clockwise direction alpha is the angle from global x axis to the local x axis measured in the counter clockwise direction that that the how you are measuring that is very very important otherwise it's going to make a difference here 
cos alpha it doesn't matter whether it's alpha is positive or negative but sin alpha it's important so how you are measuring your angle that is important that's why this counter clockwise i want to emphasize this is important so this is anyway this is how local x axis is related to global x axis this is how local displacements are going to be related to global displacements what are the local displacement local dis uh, before local displacements let's uh, uh, look at local forces what are local forces f small x1 f small y1 f capital x1 f capital y1 so wherever small x small y capital x capital y are they replace small x with small uh, f small x1 replace small y with f small y1 capital x f capital x1 f capital y1 this is capital y you replace with f capital y1 <laughs> so then you get the relation between f small x1 small y1 f capital x1 capital uh, y1 okay similarly f small x2 at the second node f small x2 f small y2 are related to f capital x2 f capital y2 through this relation and what about the moments how the moments are going to get transformed when you rotate the axis moments are not going to they are going to remain same they will not have any transformation moment is going to remain same okay so with that understanding you can write this transformation matrix you can see now it's easy to follow <laughs> what is the relationship between f small x1 f small y1 f capital x1 f capital y1 that is related here that is written in this portion and moment moment are not going to have any effect on the transformation of the coordinate axis you see how we are we are actually rotating this axis and then how this moment is going to get changed it's not going to get changed the moment is going to be stay same at that location moment is going to be same it's not going to get transformed so moment is going to remain same you see how it is written here m1 m1 is equal to you multiply this row this row with this column you are going to get m1 so it's going to be one here and what is the relationship between f small x2 f small y2 f capital x2 f capital y2 that contribution goes in here why it's going to go in this because what is the location here it's four the location is four this is five so it's going to go into four five rows and columns and what about m2 it's it's not going to have any change so it's going to remain same so this is how this transformation matrix is written you need to understand this clearly and what is this uh, c and what is this s this is that the cosine alpha sine alpha how they are uh, how they can be determined similar to your uh, plane of uh, uh, truss element similar to your plane truss how you determine same way you determine cosine alpha and sine alpha and this is a local local load vector and this is global load vector so it is compactly written as rl is equal to t t is transformation matrix which is 6 by 6 and r is this is global global load vector which is nothing but all these capital uh, x capital y and other things okay so please take a note of it and use uh, by the same relation by the same relation local displacement vector is going to be related to the global displacement vector global displacement vector is this one local displacement vector is d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d6 that is related to global displacement vector by a same relation so please take a note of this one rl is equal to t times r 
this compact this co whatever is written compactly that is uh, similar to that uh, that looks similar to uh, this plain truss element or for truss elements whatever we is, uh, looked at uh, this kind of uh, uh, relation is what we have seen so now with the, with these two relations this kl dl is equal to rl now you can replace rl with t times r and dl also can be replaced with t times d okay or you can write this this uh, this rl is uh, t times r or r is t transpose times rl please note that this uh, transformation matrix is going to be orthogonal matrix similar to uh, this uh, uh, plain truss element this whatever this transformation matrix you got here it's going to be orthogonal matrix orthogonal matrix means its uh, inverse is going to be same as transpose so how do you check uh, whether a matrix is orthogonal or not you multiply that matrix with its transpose and check whether you are going to get identity matrix or not so you please do that homework you take this matrix t and multiply with the t transpose and see whether you get identity matrix or not okay and it happens that this is an orthogonal matrix so inverse relation is r is equal to t transpose rl so that is what is written r is equal to t transpose rl and we and the dl is related to d via this relation with all this uh, information we can write this local equation system in this manner finally manipulate it and get this one. and whereas k k is nothing but your global stiffness matrix how do you get a, <coughs> a global element stiffness matrix you take the local stiffness matrix whatever you have written uh by by uh, assembling the contributions of uh, axial deformation bending deformations you multiply with the t transpose whatever a uh, transformation matrix just now you looked at transpose of that times uh, again uh, on either side uh, one side t transpose another side t you do that multiplication finally you are going to get k and the t is 6 by 6 so Uh, t transpose is also going to be six by six. K K L is six by six. T is six by six. So this is six by six, six by six, six by six. Finally, this when you multiply, you are going to get six by six matrix. And uh, global displacement vector is six by one. This is also six by one. So now dimensions are matching. so finally your element equations element equations you, you need to do that multiplication that is that is not directly given here okay that is not directly given you need to do that multiplication and get, get your uh, uh, equation uh, this is stiffness matrix and this is going to be the elemental equations in the global coordinate system like this uh, depending on the orientation of different elements you assemble the element equations and then assemble the global stiffness matrix or global equation system by putting up uh, the contribution from each of the element at appropriate locations and then the reduced equation system and solve for the unknowns and then once you solve for unknowns they are all going to be in in, in global coordinate system all the unknowns that you are going to be determining that is the rotations as well as displacement axial deformation axial displacement transverse displacement rotations are all going to be the global coordinate system so you need to go back you need to go back so this is what you are going to get you need to multiply with the transformation matrix and get in terms of local uh, uh, this uh, degrees of freedom what are the local degrees of freedom you need to get and once you get it you can determine once you have the local values you can determine what is the axial force what is shear force what is bending moment and one more thing <coughs> you can see here shear force bending moment you have this what is this term this is nothing but because whatever element we have seen it is a uh, element which is uh, 
have a uniformly distributed load. So fixed end correction has to be applied. Fixed end correction has to be applied for shear and moment. It's not required for axial force. So please take a note of this. And uh, uh, whatever you learn as a part of your uh, plane frames and space frames, instead of assembling the global equation system, if you are uh, smart enough, you can directly write the reduced equation system. And by, by uh, intelligently numbering the nodes such a way that uh, uh, all the elements uh, are going to have all the elements uh, are going to have same uh, the common node co uh, all the elements uh, ha have this common node as either their local node one or local node two consistently you need to intelligently number the nodes such a way that this common node if at all there is a common node in the structural system let that common node be consistently either node one locally and node two locally for all elements so that it's easy to uh, get an idea about the global uh, or reduced equation system okay so with all that <coughs> let me show you an example so this example actually clarifies uh, or it uh, gives you complete picture about how to go about solving a, a plane frame uh, problem here this uh, plane frame two members are there here this is fixed stand and uh, this horizontal member and an inclined member. This inclined member is fixed here and this horizontal member is subjected to a, a uniformly distributed row. Okay? Horizontal member is subjected to uniformly distributed load. Everything is given in FPS. <coughs> Everything is given in FPS units. Uh, don't worry about it. You follow uh, the consistent units and then you uh, uh, solve the problem. You are automatically you are going to get the solution. So this is the problem. And the node, node numbering is done like this. This is element 1. This is element 2. Element 1 is connecting nodes 1 and 2. Element 2 is connecting nodes 2 and 3. Node 2 is the common element. Uh, sorry, node 2 is uh, uh, the common node. Node 2 is common node for both elements. And on element 2, you have uniformly distributed load. So fixed end correction has to be applied for second element solution. And with that understanding, the node numbering is shown here, degrees of freedom are shown here, positive directions of degrees of freedom are also shown here, all the moments, rotations acting in the counterclockwise direction are positive, all the displacements uh, in the transverse direction acting in the upward direction are positive, all the displacements acting <coughs> in the axial direction are positive if they are acting along the uh, uh, this uh, centroidal axis of that member or the local x axis. So uh, that is all what is shown here. And please note that here the degrees of freedom that are shown are global degrees of freedom. These are global degrees of freedom. Okay. And the orientation of small axis, small x axis, capital X axis is shown counterclockwise direction alpha. How do you get alpha? All the dimensions are given. You can easily find what is this angle. From the properties of a right angle triangle, you can easily find what is this angle. And this is for element two, this is for element one. And once you know the orientation of each of these elements, you can you can get the transformation matrix. You can go through all these details, okay? You can get the transformation matrix and coefficients A1, A2. We already noted what is A1, A2. So you find A1, A2 based on the information that is given in the problem. What are the material properties? What are the geometric dimensions for that particular element? Element 1. 
and also i told you for uh, uh, this uh, plane truss space truss problems whatever uh, i told you same thing is valid here you need to note down what is your local node one what is your local node two local node one is here local node one is just let me go to this figure this is taken as local node one this is taken as local node two so what are the coordinates of this node this is plane frame so only x and y are going to be there this is origin so x1 is equal to 0 y1 is equal to 0 and what about x2 y2 you can easily find x2 is 30 feet and y2 is 30 feet so that is what is it or that is the, are the converted into inches that is converted into inches and length of the member is formed all the direction cosines are found and there are no distributed loads on element that is also noted so this is the transformation matrix and you know the local stiffness matrix you multiply local stiffness matrix with this transformation matrix in this manner and get the global stiffness matrix and there is no load on first element so local display uh, local force vector is going to be zero so global force vector is also going to be zero global force vector is also going to be zero okay and similarly for element two what is element two local node one what is element two local node two? element element uh, <coughs> sorry element 2 this is taken as node 1 this is taken as node 2 this is taken as node 1 this is taken as node 2 and that is uh, that is somewhat different that is somewhat uh, uh, sorry that is somewhat different from what uh, i suggested you take common node common node is either consistently first node or second node for all the elements but here we are uh, not doing it then we need to assemble the full uh, global stiffness matrix and get the reduced stiffness matrix okay so this is uh, local node one local node two rest of the things you can easily cross check and this element two is uh, oriented along horizontal axis so the transformation matrix looks like this identity matrix <laughs> you don't need to do any any you don't need to do any uh, transformation. What is meant by transformation matrix being identity matrix? So there is no uh, requirement of any doing any transformation. So uh, the local element equations are going to be same as global element equations. So local stiffness matrix. And now for the second element, you have uniformly distributed load applied. So what is what are what is going to be the contribution to the load vector? Please note that <laughs> I already told you. If you want to write the load vector, if you know how uh, what are the fixed end uh, solutions, assuming both of these ends are fixed, both of these ends are fixed. That is node two and node three. Assuming them to be fixed. Subject, uh, assuming this is like a beam element subjected to this uniformly distributed load of uh, uh, <coughs> whatever value that is given acting in the downward direction if you can write fixed end solution for this at these two nodes and reverse the put it in a vector reverse this sign that is going to be the load vector and there are no axial loads here so the load vector is going to look like this Okay, <coughs> and now for the first element, for the first element, second node, common node is the second node. For the first element, common node is the second node. So that means we need to look at this corner. You please take a note of this corner, this one, bottom three by three. And here, uh, uh, a multiplication symbol is missing. You please take a note of this. 
so this corner is good because uh, first node first node is fixed first node is fixed so in your reduced stiffness matrix this portion is not going to come into picture so only this bottom portion is going to come into uh, picture <coughs> so take a note of this one i'm going slowly hoping that uh, you are taking note of it okay so take a note of this and now what about second element for the second element this is local node 1 this is local node 2 so this local node 1 being means we need to look at the top portion this one this is this part is going to go into your reduced equation system so that is what is noted so this portion is noted along with this here from element 1 <clears throat> the portion which goes into the contribution of the reduced stiffness matrix or uh, reduced equation system is this one from element 1 from element 2 it is this one. so uh, the, the this problem illustrates if you mix up if you mix up uh, 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 this uh, common node without uh, consistently being it as a node 1 or locally node 2 if you mix it up how to deal with that that is what is actually illustrated here. so you take from the first element you take the bottom quarter from the second element you take the top quarter combine both of these you get the reduced equation system solve for this reduced equation system solve for the unknowns unknowns are going to be whatever nodal degrees of freedom at node 2 u2 v2 theta 2 Once you get this uh, u two v two theta two, both uh, each of the element, and determine the determine the local displacement vector. Once you determine the local displacement vector, you can easily find axial force, shear force, moment, using your uh, earlier whatever relations you have for axial deformations and bending effects <laughs> and element one there is no distributed load so no fixed end correction is required element two anyway that is continued this one is continued element two same thing you need to do get the local displacement vector Find the axial forces, shear force, and bending moment. Element two, you have distributed load applied, so you need to apply fixed end correction. Once you got all these values, once you got all these uh, values, you can plot axial force for this frame element, how it is varying, shear force, how it is varying, bending moment, how it is varying. And also, how do I check whether the solution that I got is uh, correct or not? You need to draw the free body diagram for each of the element and check whether each of the element is independently in equilibrium and also as a system it is in equilibrium. Whatever you learned as a part of your, uh, 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 this one, plane truss, space truss and uh, uh, beam bending problems all those concepts you need to apply and cross check the solution please note that the idea is here uh, not comparing uh, it's uh, suppose each of you are employed in different organizations solving different problems who is going to help you whether your solution is correct or not how do you justify whether your solution is correct or not so you need to do these che self checks you need to do these self checks Free body diagram is shown here and you can see whether the free body diagram is uh, uh, like you know in equilibrium or not okay any questions here 
and if there are no questions extending it to space frame is straight forward except the one more dimension is going to come and degrees of freedom are going to increase at each node you have 6 degrees of freedom please note that for a plane frame element equation is of <coughs> element stiffness matrix or element equation <coughs> is of size 6 by 6 because <coughs> at each node you have 3 degrees of freedom two nodes 6 degrees of freedom whereas for space frame total you have 6 degrees uh, sorry total you have uh, 6 yeah total you have 6 deg degrees of freedom at each node so total equation or the equ size of element equation itself is going to be 12 by 12 and what what is the what is that additional thing that is coming here additional thing that is coming is you already when you combine axial effect with bending effect you got a plane frame and in addition to that here you have out of plane rotation or uh, this uh, uh, torsion is going to come into picture torsion is going to come into picture so you need to add axial effects bending effects torsional effects then you are going to get element equation for frame element element equations for frame element that is how you get so please take a note of this problem or this figure here how this uh, at least even if you are unable to draw it as it is you just uh, try to uh, redraw this in your notebook as as uh, uh, whatever way you it's convenient to you okay please take a note of it and please see these forces these forces are shown to be acting or uh, these forces are shown to be positive if they are acting uh, in the direction of corresponding uh, uh, axis why q y is positive it is acting in the positive direction of y axis uh, q z is acting in the uh, positive direction of z axis <coughs> this is a space frame element these are the <coughs> these are uh, these are the uh, degrees of freedom for the space frame okay what about sign convection sign convection is also going to be similar to your uh, plane frame except the torsional effects are coming in the picture and how this uh, please note that uh, there is a relation there is a relation between this uh, you can see here there is a relation between d3 and d6 in the sense uh, what i am saying is if d3 you see d3 is acting is shown as though it is acting uh, or it is positive please note that first of all all these arrows are if the if the 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 degrees of freedom are acting in that uh, in the direction of arrow they are all considered as positive so point i want to make is this d3 is shown as positive like this if it is acting like this and d6 is shown positive acting in this that how do I, how do i get it is there a relation is all this is all from right hand thumb rule uh, maybe in your 12th class as a part of your physics you must have Uh, use this kind of rule, right hand thumb rule, uh, to to uh, see how current flows and other things. Okay, so now you apply same thing, right hand thumb rule. You put your right hand, you put your right hand thumb in the direction of the axial force. You can see uh, my uh, my uh, hand here. You put your uh, right hand with your thumb pointing towards. the direction in which you have that axial uh, like d3 is pointing let's uh, see the relation between d3 and d6 and uh, d6 is going if d3 is acting positive in this in the direction in which i am putting this thumb and d6 is going to be active 
uh, sorry, D6 is going to be positive if it is acting in the direction in which the other fingers are curling. The other fingers are curling in that direction, D6 is going to be positive. So now you can see, you can apply same rule for all the things. D2, D2 is acting in the upward direction and D5 is going to be positive if the, the, it's going to act in this direction. In the way the other fingers are, in the way the other fingers are curling. Okay? And similarly, D1. What is the relationship between D1 and D4? Again, right hand thumb rule. So this is how uh, this is this sign convention is uh, 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 this was shown here. Okay. And once you have this, uh, these are the uh, degrees of freedom. Forces are going to be acting similarly. Forces are also going to be uh, positive if they are acting in the in the in the way it is shown here. Any questions here? So now, what is what is that which you have not learned, and then what is the additional thing that is coming in? Okay, axial effects. You know, you can write the element equations. Once you the, know the degrees of freedom, once you know the forces using corresponding forces and degrees of freedom, you can write uh, uh, element equations for axial effects. You can even write element equations for bending effects. Here, bending is going to happen in two directions. Bending is going to happen in two directions because you can see here in this. this is, that is the reason I told you to take a note of it. To take take a note of this figure. Bending is going to happen along major axis as well as minor axis because this is a space frame element. You can see here UDL is acting along uh, in the, in, the uh, with, in a positive direction of y axis, and also UDL is acting in the <coughs> positive direction of z axis. So bending is going to happen in two planes. One is one is in x y plane and x z plane. So irrespective, whatever it may be, whether bending is happening in x y plane or x z plane, you can easily write that bending effects using the corresponding uh, uh, the degrees of freedom and forces. Bending effects in XY plane. And what about sign conventions? You need to go back and stick to the sign convention we are following. Internal forces, moments, one sign convention, applied forces and moments as well as nod nodal degrees of freedom, another sign convention. <laughs> so bending effects in XY plane, you can write the Element equations, <coughs> bending effects in XZ plane, that also you can write. All the bending effects are related through these uh, shape functions for a beam element. Okay. And then what is, what is that you have not learned? That is this torsional effect. What is that you have not learned is this torsional effect. Okay, and here torsional effect is shown D4, D6 along one of the axes. Here it is shown along one of the axes. So let's see this one D4 and D10 and the, the, and other 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 uh, uh, rotations are going to happen along Z axis and Y axis. Here it is only shown along x-axis or you can, you can assume this to be local axis. I have taken an element which is undergoing torsion. <laughs> so uh, that is what is shown here. Instead of axial, imagine this is an axial element, then you are going to have axial force D1 and some other uh, axial displacements and axial forces. It is axial effects. Here, torsional effect. So here, at this node, I have rotation and moment. Rotation and moment. <laughs> Is it clear? And you need to go back. You need to go back to your strength of materials or mechanics of materials. And then <coughs> you see the governing differential equation for this. 
governing differential equation for this kind of torsion. So if you have a structural element subjected to torsional moment at both ends, how it is related to uh, this angle of twist? To go back to your mechanics of materials, you can see this relation. Okay? And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, is this relation you think that you are seeing here? Is this relation you think that you are seeing? It's not really new thing that you are seeing here. Whatever you learned earlier for axial member, in axial, suppose if it is axial member, instead of GJ, you are going to have EA. In axial, in axial member, uh, what is the, uh, the unknown? It is the axial displacement. Here it is angle of twist. So EA, multiplied by du dx is going to be your moment applied. So a similar thing, similar thing you have already seen. You go back to your basics. Uh, I, <coughs> I don't have that relation here. You can see here. What is this f, small f? Small f is nothing but Ea, Ea times du dx. Or this one. The small f is nothing but Ea times du dx. This one. And derivative of that is going to be your force. Or if you if you take at any point, if you take at any point, E times A multiplied by du over dx. Du over dx is nothing but strain. Multiply strain with E, you are going to get stress. Stress multiplied with area of cross section, you are going to get force. And what about here? What about this one? That is also same. Ea is your axial rigidity. Gj is your torsional rigidity. Okay? So, <clears throat> this is like a shear strain multiplied by, multiplied by this uh, G is going to give you shear stress multiplied by polar our torsional constant is going to give you moment, torsional moment. So this is this relation is similar to that of an axial effect. So the point I want to make is your torsional effects element equation is also going to relate same way. What is this G? Sorry, what is this J? Polar or torsional constant. What is this torsional constant for different types of sections? They are all given here. These are all well documented in any of the mechanics of materials books. You can go through that. Okay. So your relation, your relation, the governing differential equation for a element subjected to torsional moment is given by this. And how this relation is obtained? You go back to your, uh, this relation. What is this? If E and A are constants, if E and A are constants, you can take out of the differentiation, then it becomes E times A, second derivative of U with respect to, <coughs> second derivative of U with respect to X. E times A, second derivative of U with respect to X. E E times A, for torsional effects, you need to replace with G times J. Second derivative of U with respect to X, you need to replace with second derivative of theta with respect to X. Angle of twist. And what is this Q? Q here is distributed load along the length. Whereas, in case of 
in case of this torsional effect that we are seeing here is there any distributed torsional moment there is no distributed torsional moment so that that term is going to be zero so this is the equation governing differential equation for that problem which is straightforward coming from wherever ea is there replace ea with the gj wherever u is there replace with angle of twist since there is no distributed torsional moment q is going to be zero so this is the element or uh, this is the governing differential equation for this kind of member which is subjected to torsional moment and if this is governing differential equation with q is equal to 0 for axial effects you replace wherever ea is there with gj and rest of the thing is straightforward wherever point loads are there you replace with mx1 my x2 mx1 mx2 so this is the element equation for torsional effects Okay, so I'm going to stop here. So now we learn element equations for bending effects or axial effects, bending effects in both planes and also torsional effects. Torsional effect we have seen only along one of the axes. Similar kind of things will be there along the other two axes, Y and Z axis. So once we have all this, under the assumption that, under the assumption that axial effects bending effects the torsional effects are independent of each other which is a valid assumption for small deformations so then you can write the contribution from each of these effects and get the element equations for one element so that's going to be 12 by 12 equation system And if you really want to solve a problem, if this we'll go through it in tomorrow's class, rest of the things. If you want to solve a problem like this, simple problem. You can see your three members are there. They are all connected like this. Even if, if you want to solve this problem, there are four nodes. Each node, four nodes, or uh, three elements are there. For each element, you get 12 by 12 equation system. And you can imagine, global equation system. It's going to be, it's going to be four, uh, four nodes are there at each node, six degrees of freedom. So it's going to be 24 by 24. Okay. So instead of that, we need to do an intelligent node numbering directly, write The reduced equation system. This is the reduced equation system for that problem. We'll go through it in tomorrow's class. Okay. So let me take attendance. And if you have any questions, we'll uh, discuss in tomorrow's class. Uh, please uh, keep the questions with you. And let me take attendance. Okay, thank you.